My hope for all of you is that you'll reach the stage in your college admissions journey where you have acceptances to a couple of the top BSMD and pre-med programs in the nation, and you'll have to make the decision, where do I go? This video will be a detailed guide outlining exactly how to choose the perfect BSMD program for you, given all of the different factors that each college has. If you've watched my previous videos, you'll know that I was accepted to three BSMD programs. The New Jersey Medical School program with Drew University as an undergraduate school, Hofstra's BSMD program with Zucker School of Medicine, and the current program that I attend, which is Rensselaer Polytechnic Institute's BSMD program with Albany Medical College. Some of you might be in the process of deciding which BSMD programs to attend right now, or in the process of picking out your schools for the next application cycle, so I hope this video is timely and gives you a chance to see exactly what I thought through when I was deciding between these three schools. I want you to take any preconceived notions you have, any rankings that you have in your head, and just throw it out the window. Because picking the college and the place that you will stay for the next four or maybe even more years is realistically one of the most important decisions you've ever made in your life. This is, for most people, the first time that regardless of what your parents, your teachers, your friends have to say, you are the one making the decision. You are the one who makes the final call. Emotions have to be set aside for this. I know how much pull you get from high school, what it's like to be in that environment. I was just there a year ago. But you have to understand, you cannot throw away your entire future in medicine just to go to a flashy big name state school. People will not respect you more for doing it. The people in your life who actually matter will respect you for making the decision that's better for you, especially if that's a difficult decision for you to make. Now let's get into the core of the video. Why did I come here. Why did I come to RPI? The easiest way to start is by sorting, not ranking, sorting the BSMD programs by statistics. We're all STEM people, we're all math people, we like numbers. So let's start by breaking down the numbers. There are three things that we want to look at. What is the minimum GPA required by the program to stay in it every year and to matriculate up to the med school? This is something you should be able to easily find on the program website or in some kind of books or materials that are available online. Secondly, does the program require an MCAT score? Does it require you to take the MCAT? And if it does, what is that minimum score requirement? Is it constant? Is it flux rate by the year? Learn how the schools operate there. And third, you guys know I'm not the biggest fan about talking about like finances on this channel because I have a personal belief that if you're going to a field like medicine, you should be financially stable in the future. However, this is something to take into account for a BSMD program of like an eight year length, just given the fact that you could be pushing like $200,000, $300,000 expenses. And especially if we're talking about something like Brown Plemy, which if you guys didn't know, if you run the calculations right now, it costs three quarters of a million dollars to attend Brown's undergraduate school and their med school. This is a screenshot that I took from their med school like tuition page. It literally costs over $100,000 per year to attend their med school right now. That price increases every single year. It's absolutely ridiculous, so we have to bring finances in as our third little point. There's other factors as well that we need to consider, but let's start here because the numbers are easy to just kind of get sorted into our minds. Starting with GPA, the minimum GPA requirement for all the programs that I got into were in the vicinity of one another. Drew University wanted a 3.4, RPI wanted a 3.5, and Hofstra wanted a 3.6. Now, if you're in high school right now, it's hard to understand like how hard it is to get like a certain GPA in college because let's face it, like the majority of you who've gone to BSMD programs probably have at least a 3.8, if not 3.9 or even a 4.0. In college, getting a 3.5 is a little bit more difficult, like for sure, especially at a school like RPI, which is like a more techie school, you have to put in some work. But the best thing for you to do is actually to just reach out to students who are in the program and ask them how difficult it is. Most programs requirements are around a 3.5, which is not impossible, but it'll definitely be a little bit of work. Literally just reach out to students who are in the program. You can find them on LinkedIn. You can find them on social media, like Instagram and stuff. Or if you're like, you've already been accepted to the program, you can reach out to like the program coordinators and ask them to send you contact information and then just talk to them. If they tell you that it's hard, then, you know, keep that in mind when you're making a decision. But most of the time they'll tell you, you know, it's going to be work, but it's generally pretty chill. Then the second thing you want to look out for is what happens if you don't meet the GPA requirements? Because that's always something you want to keep in mind. When I was looking into RPI, I understood that RPI had 
actually pretty lenient rules. If you miss the GPA mark for one semester, you're not like automatically booted out the program. They're not gonna send my ass back to like Portland or anything crazy like that. But you get put on academic probation for a semester. Basically, all that is is like the, the med school and like some counselors at RPI are just gonna keep checking in with you and make sure that things are going well. And then you can get back on track with your GPA from there. So you can miss one semester. And if you miss two semesters, well then now it's a little bit of an issue. But after talking with people in the program, I came to learn that nobody in like modern history of the program has gotten kicked out for GPA requirements. So that was a pretty big green flag for me. For MCAT scores, not having to take the MCAT is huge, okay? Don't let schools that claim that they have like a lower MCAT score requirement fool you. The fact that you have to study for the MCAT, undergo that process and then take it, it is a lot of work and not having to take the MCAT can save you up to hundreds of hours. Drew and RPI did not require the MCAT. Hofstra required the MCAT and they wanted about a 510 as the required score. Most schools require around a 508. That's been the general ballpark and that's about 75th percentile. A 510 is a little bit higher than that and it's a little bit on the high side in general. You still have to work for that score. It's not just going to come easy. So when I was looking at my options, it seemed like a bit of a no-brainer to try to you know, go towards the schools that didn't require me to take an MCAT. Now, I didn't just dismiss Hofstra off the table, but it's just something to keep in mind, right? You're going to save hundreds of hours of time by not having to take the MCAT. Also keep in mind that some BSMD programs don't have a fixed MCAT score requirement. They require you to take the MCAT, but the score that they want you to get alternates like every year based on what the average of like the previous year's matriculating class was. That's something that a lot of schools do that I've never really been a fan of because you don't fully know what you're getting yourself into. But generally speaking, those schools will only require you to get around like, it's like a 510, 511, nothing like super egregious. So don't be too worried, but just keep in mind that like, that is a thing that some schools do. And if you're not willing to like go through with that, and if you have a little bit of hesitation there, I, I think it's warranted. Just talk to the students in the program to try to get a better gauge of whether you, you know, you should commit to that program or not. When it comes to finances, that's a situation that's unique to every family. But keep in mind, there's one thing to note. I'm going to RPI, which is a seven year program, compared to the traditional programs like at Hofstra University, which is eight years. By saving that one year, shaving off an entire year off my education, all of that cost from that one year also gets saved. RPI only has a three year undergrad compared to Hofstra's four years. So the actual cost per year of both schools, in my case, was about the same. They each gave about the same amount of scholarship money. But because I would have gone to Hofstra for one more year, I would have had one more year of expense. And if you're also taking out student loans, there's also another, like a lot of different things to account for this. So keep in mind that if you go to a seven year program, you're gonna save a little bit of money. The next thing to consider is other program requirements. Are there a required number of volunteering hours? Do they want you to research. If it's a six or seven year program, are they going to require you to take a bunch of extra credits every single semester or spend your summers at the school cramming in extra classes and internships and projects? You want to keep all of these things in mind because while you're getting into a BSMD program, you also want your quality of life to be decent. Part of the point of going to a BSMD program is that you have this extra time to kind of explore other things, maybe related to medicine or even not, just to grow as a person and eventually become a better doctor. Are you actually gonna have those opportunities going to the school? You wanna make sure that nothing catches you off guard. Read everything you can, and if you have questions, literally just email the coordinators of the program and ask a little bit more detail about those requirements. They're totally willing to help you. As a reference point, RPI asks all their students in the program to do 400 hours of total like volunteering in like some level of like community service, healthcare setting, and then also one research internship in our third year summer. Now for me, I talked to the people in the program, they said the 400 hours would be light work, like nobody really worries about that. And after coming here, that was true, like they didn't lie to me. And for me, like doing a research internship in my third year summer, that sounded like a win, like a guaranteed paid research internship where I'm like making money, I get to chill in New York, do some research that I'm like personally investing in and set myself up to get like an MD with distinction research or an MD PhD, I'd be more than happy to do that. So look at your program requirements. If you'd be more than happy to do whatever your school is offering as well, well then that's probably a good thing. The medical school affiliated with the program is also something you need to think about. Do they have diverse residency placement rates? What's their style of teaching like? One thing that kind of stood out to me when I was doing my research was that for Hofstra Zucker School of Medicine, they had a very student-driven case-based learning style. It was a new med school and like a new curriculum they were implementing. I did my research into it and I didn't really like it. It was something that the school was heavily marketing, but I didn't feel it really aligned with my learning style and the way that I was used to doing things in high school. And because of that, 
it wasn't really something that I was super interested in getting engaged in in the future. A lot of med schools have different ways of teaching, and if you're comparing a couple options, find the med school that works best with you. Another thing people bring up a lot is the fact that a school like Albany Med School, for instance, that I'll be attending, is an unranked med school. So people bring up the point that Pratik, it's, it's unranked, it's probably like a you know pretty shitty med school, like why are you going there over your other options? Well, here's the thing. If you have questions like that in your mind, don't just let them linger. What I did was I hit up like a couple of people in the program after going to one of the sessions. I realized that the reason that Albany Med is unranked is not because it's like some doo doo kaka med school, but it's simply because they don't engage in like the, in giving their statistics to all like the news people to get their ranking up and to boost those things. If you guys didn't already know, a lot of those ranking systems are not like super accurate. Schools can pay, they can give different kinds of information, be like uh, work, have better relationships with those companies to boost their rating. Albany Med doesn't engage in that. And so as a result, they've been taking off a lot of these rankings and stuff. And before they were, they used to be like around like a top 40 med school in, in many different cases. And hearing that was just kind of like comforting. Like I kind of had a better understanding of what the med school is like. And I also didn't come in with any kind of weird judgments. I knew what I was getting myself into. The thing about medicine is that in the United States, for a med school to get accredited, it takes a ton of work. There's not really such thing as like a bad med school as compared to like a regular undergraduate college. There's thousands and thousands of random colleges, online schools that you could attend. Med schools are not like that. Every med school is pretty good. It's been fully accredited by a board, good quality doctors come out of it, and in a field like medicine, your mirror takes you a long way. Going to Harvard Med is, is great, it's gonna unlock some opportunities, but it's not going to take you like that much further like it wouldn't perhaps a field like engineering, where Harvard could be like a gateway to connections that will get you into another company. In medicine, you need to build yourself up through all the different things that happen in med school to get those high quality residency opportunities. And then there's the other side of college, the social environment. One of my biggest pet peeves with the Drew University, for instance, is that the entire school is literally smaller than my high school when it comes to their class size. Like they barely have like over 1,600 students in their undergrad class size. So maybe like 400 freshman students. I didn't want to go to an environment where I felt like trapped. Now I know when it comes to like your social scene, it's not really the best argument for convincing your parents, but at the end of the day, you don't want to spend four years or more in a place that you hate. Right? You want it to be something that's at least reasonable. When it comes to RPI, it's not like the craziest party place in the world, but with a freshman class as about 2,500, you can work with it, right? There's plenty of new people that you can go and meet, plenty of friends that you can make. You're not like trapped down to like the four other, you know, Indian kids that are around you to form like some Indian Student Association Club. Like you have the freedom. Hofstra would have been the best environment for like socializing. It's a big uh, state school, tons of people, but you also have to be practical, right? I'm not about to pick a school that will determine my future over the fact that I can make more friends, like it's chill, you'll make friends wherever you go. Now those were the most important points that I feel that everyone can use to compare different schools, but if you have the opportunity, I really, really recommend you go to visit these schools in person. It can really give you a different perspective that I feel nothing online, even those virtual tours can match. When I went to visit Drew University, that's when I really like felt in my stomach that like high school vibe. The classrooms literally looked like my high school. There's another private school School that's nearby to my house that drew it almost looked exactly like that and I just wasn't really messing with it on top of that when I went to visit New Jersey Medical School it's pretty well known to people on the East Coast that like Newark isn't the greatest area ever but when I went to visit the med school I just didn't have a good experience there I didn't really like it I couldn't see myself living there for four years it wasn't that great. But when I went to visit Albany Medical School and I went around Albany, it gave me like Portland vibes. I could totally see myself being there and I, I love seeing the RPI campus. It, it seemed like, you know, it wasn't anything like crazy spectacular. I wasn't like super impressed, but it seemed like a decent place with a good education system. It felt very grounded and I, I really got like a, a, a good sense of what the community and the college was like when I came to visit. On top of that, when I went to visit Hofstra and Zucker School of Medicine, I absolutely loved it. The Zucker School of Medicine is like brand new. I think it was only like established in like the last like 20 years. So their facilities are like top of the line. It was beautiful. And Hofstra is also a pretty new school, very renovated. I loved going around that school. Like that campus was beautiful. It was actually such a good experience being able to just walk around the med school and see everything that I almost reconsidered going to RPI, like I came to do my college visits and pretty much confident that I was gonna go to RPI's program. And I left my Hofstra visit like, hold up, 
what if I just came here? I was even willing to like take the MCAT to go to Hofstra, but then after taking some more time to consider the options, RPI made the most sense. But I never would have even gotten that perspective if I didn't come to visit Hofstra. So that was absolutely huge for me. We are pretty deep into this video and I'm finally touching on pre-med schools. Here's the thing, unless your decision is between a BSMD program and Harvard or like another top 10 prestigious university, BSMD should be a no-brainer. I cringe when I see people choose a school like Johns Hopkins or like UC Berkeley over good quality BSMD spots because nine times out of 10, the logic doesn't even make sense. You're literally throwing away your entire future for the sake of momentary prestige. To be able to go and like dap your homies up and tell them a school name that they like fully recognize and know and value. For what? There's a huge emotional pull when you're like a senior in high school. And if you're not there yet, understand that that will come. I totally understand that I've been in your shoes. But to be able to throw everything that you've worked for away, just to dap up your friends and be like, yo, bro, I'm going to George Washington University. No disrespect to the schools and all. But it's just not worth it. You have to realize that like, as someone who's been through this process, the college admissions hype lasts about six weeks. Okay, you're gonna have one day that you wake up, right? And you know, you might feel like a little certain type of way. You're gonna feel that the next day and the next day, let a week, two weeks, three weeks go by, all those feelings will pass. And the moment that you leave high school, I'm telling you right now, 95% of those people, you'll never see again. The only people you see are the homies closest to you. And they'll be happy for you regardless of where you're going. They're all wanting to see you succeed. They'll be more than happy if you go to a BSMD program and you just explain like what it means to them. They're gonna be gassed for you. They'll be excited for you. Don't make a decision purely based off of prestige. If it helps you make your decision, take all the timestamps that I've used for this video that basically touch on like all the different points, organize it into like a table as well as all the schools that you've been accepted to, and then do some kind of like rating ranking system of each of the schools and what your thoughts are really to get yourself organized and really see which school is like clearly the forerunner. That way you can take into account all the different important factors and then make the decision that's best for you. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments. I'd be more than happy to answer them. Thank you all so much for watching. This has been Pratik. Like, comment, subscribe. I'm out to your success.